You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Three Pakistan-based terrorists neutralized in the counter-terrorism operation in Kashmir. Deadly bomb blast rocks Kabul. Khani proposes prisoner exchange deal to revive peace talks. Pakistan misusing religious sentiments to evoke separatist clash in India. And research scholars call out Pakistan for supporting terrorism. Pakistan's tireless campaign of unleashing terror inside Indian territory is being given a befitting reply by Indian forces. Proactive Indian defense system has successfully eliminated the terrorists who have been pushed into Jammu and Kashmir by Pakistan. This week, they neutralized three of them and it's not a one-off breakthrough, but the forces have been successful in busting all the nefarious anti-India plots hatched in the corridors of Islamabad and Rawalpindi. In a major setback to Islamabad, three Pak back terrorists were gunned down in two separate joint counter-terrorism operations carried out by Indian Army and Jammu and Kashmir Police. Based on specific inputs about terrorists hiding in the targeted area, a search operation was launched during which terrorists fired upon the security forces, leading to a gun battle. There was a input here, a specific input was searched. This time, the firing was done. One military was killed. The dead body was retrieved. The other possibility was that the search was going on. 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 Pakistan has stepped up its devious agenda of sending across more terrorists since New Delhi decided to get away with the Article 370, a provisionary article that kept Kashmiris away from the rest of India. According to the Indian security forces, two of the three terrorists belong to Pakistan-based terrorist group lashkar e -Taiba. Both of them were operating in Bandepura and were involved in various terror crimes and civil atrocities. Also incriminating material, including goods bearing Pakistan marks as well as arms and ammunition, have been recovered from their possession. In this operation, there is no collateral damage. There are two terrorists who have been killed, and their support is with Lashkir-e-Toiba. And one of the terrorists who have been identified was known as Abu Tala. And he was active here for a long time. He is a Pakistani terrorist. Continuing with its malicious agenda, Pakistani troops recently launched rounds of unprovoked ceasefire violations by firing of small arms and intense shelling with mortars along the line of control in Rajori district of Kashmir, which led to civilian injuries and casualties. With such vicious attempts, Pakistan is trying to create the state of turmoil in Kashmir by threatening civilians. यहाँ पे बहुत ही फायरिंग चलती है ये अभी देख लो लोग अपने अपने घरों में छुपे हुए हैं ये ही देख लो हम कहीं बार स्कूल भी नहीं जा सकते. Terrorism has been used as an instrument of state policy by Islamabad, and significant substance corroborating the fact is available in the public domain. Former Pakistan President Parvez Musharraf, in an interview, had admitted that militants were trained in Pakistan as Mujahideen to unleash mayhem in India. He also held Osama bin Laden, Ayman al-Zawahiri, Jalaluddin Haqqani and jihadi terrorists as Pakistan's heroes. We have brought the whole world to the whole world. We have trained the Taliban, we have given them weapons, we have given them. They were our heroes. This is Haqqani, our hero is our hero. Osama bin Laden is our hero. उनकी बिल्कुल ट्रेनिंग भी होती थी और हम उनके सपोर्ट में थे कि ये मुजाहिदीन हैं जो इंडियन आर्मी से लड़ेंगे अपने हकुक के लिए यहाँ फिर ये लश्करे तैयबा वगैरह बनी बहुत सी दस बारह और भी बनी वो हमारे हीरो थे जी 
This revelation by General Musharraf is nothing but proof that Pakistan, which denies its role in terrorism, has been relentless in its ambitions of subverting peace and harmony in India. It has not just been providing safe havens to terrorists, but also consistently been training and launching them against India. Eighteen years of war and endless loss of lives describe Afghanistan's contemporary situation. A recent car bomb blast in Kabul that claimed over 10 lives further explains the miserable law and order situation in the country that is deteriorating by each passing day. While the peace talks ended abruptly between the Taliban and the United States, there is a new risen hope of revival of talks as Afghanistan is headed towards a new prisoner exchange deal with Taliban in the coming days, a report. At least seven people were killed and several injured in Afghan capital Kabul this week in a car bomb explosion near the Interior Ministry office. The attack comes just few days after three judges and a court staffer were killed in Logar province of Afghanistan after Taliban militants stopped their car in the latest attack on the judiciary. Taliban insurgents fighting to overthrow the foreign-backed Afghan government have long targeted the judiciary in retaliation for harsh sentences given to their fighters. A day before the attack near Interior Ministry of Kabul, the Afghan government secured the release of two professors from the American University of Afghanistan in exchange for three captured terrorists. Although the government's initiative was expected to lower down the violent tone of the Taliban, but it resulted in a completely contradictory situation where the Taliban launched a deadly terror attack in Kabul just few hours after the announcement of prisoner exchange deal. ای توفیه بود که دینه روز رئیس جمهور انا سخوانی را رعا کرد با چند تا طالب و وحشی دیگه اینی توفیهش بود نمی فاهم چرا این حکومت از طالب قدر ترس داره از اینکه برین در پروسه سلح و پول در اونجا مصرف کنین مهمات بخرین سرکوب کنین امی وحشی ها را که گم شو از افغانستان the Afghan government decided to release two senior Taliban commanders and a leader of the Haqqani terror group in exchange for an American and an Australian professor who were kidnapped in 2016. The decision for prisoner swap could pave the way for resuming the peace talks between the United States and the Taliban that stands stalled at present. Previously, the Taliban have refused to deal with Kabul, who they view as a puppet of the United States. تصمیم گرفتیم که سه تن از زندانیان طالب را که از کشورهای بیرون در همکاری نزدیک و همه جانبه شرکای بینمالی ما دستگیر گردیده و از مدت بدین سو در توقیف خانه بگرام زیر نظارت دولت افغانستان بودند و طور مشروط از بند رها سازند این سه نفر عبارتند Aji Mali Khan, Di Wali Khan Zoy, Abd Rashid, Di Muhammad Umar Zoy, Anas, Di Jalaluddin Zoy. Two of the three Taliban being released are Hafiz Rashid and Anas Haqqani. The Haqqani network has in recent years carried large-scale terrorist attacks on civilians. It is believed to be based in Pakistan and is part of the Taliban in Afghanistan. The prisoner swap exercise initiated by the Afghan government reflects a wider effort to start direct negotiations between the Taliban and the Afghan government. In the relationship with the United States of Afghanistan and the United States of the United States, we have a mechanism and a wish to get rid of the government of these three people to the meaning of the enemy of the enemy and to the destruction of their actions. نخواهد شد تدابیر مشترک بین ما و شرکای بین المللی ما چنان است که این تصمیم دشوار اما قابل درک بتواند هم قوت ما را به نمایش بگذارد و هم نیت ما را که خواهان صلح هستیم و برای اعتماد سازی آغاز مذاکرات رو در رو 
و حل سلامیس این بدبختی توان و اراده اتخاذ تصمیم های سخت و جدی را نیز داریم. The U.S. and the Taliban were close to completing a deal to end the 18-year conflict until U.S. President Donald Trump scuttled the deal in a tweet in September. Most of the terms of the Provisional Peace Agreement were classified, but they included the withdrawal of 5,000 American soldiers from five bases across Afghanistan by 2020. The Taliban would have agreed to renounce Al-Qaeda, fight the Islamic State group and stop jihadis from using the South Asian country as a safe haven. Pakistan's malicious agenda against India got recently busted once again when Indian security agencies apprehended two suspected Khalistani militants from Punjab. The duo belong to a separatist group called Sikh Regiment that also includes Pakistani members in it. The group was planning to carry out large-scale terror attacks in Punjab. On the other hand, Pakistan is resorting to misuse of Sikh religious sentiments by supporting pro-Khalistan militants who raised anti-India slogans in Islamabad just four days after the opening of Kartarpur Corridor, a report. Two Khalistani terror suspects arrested at India's Mohali airport recently revealed a sinister plot by Pakistan to revive terror in Punjab. The plan included foreign funding and series of grenade blasts across the state. The two suspects, Lakhvir Singh and Surinder Kaur, were receiving huge amount of funds from Pakistan's notorious spy agency ISI to buy weapons and other purposes to carry out the blasts in Punjab. Accused Lakhbir Singh had formed a group called Sikh Regiment with Pakistani people associated with ISI. Pakistan is a rogue nation who has absolute and total hatred for India. 24 by 7, 365 days, they are always thinking through of methods as to how to cause chaos and mayhem in India, how to destabilize India, how to destroy India's homogeneity and integrity, how to bring in communal violence in India and under no circumstances Pakistan is going to mend its ways, notwithstanding the fact that we have very strong government in place and Pakistan knows that the retribution will be very strong and very swift. That notwithstanding, Pakistan is not giving up its efforts to incite separatist violence in India. Pro-Khalistan elements that have been spewing venom against India across the globe with their malicious anti-India campaigns have grown desperate after each failing attempt. Four days after the opening of Kartarpur Corridor, Khalistan supporters from Pakistan raised posters and flags of Jarnail Singh Bhindrawale. Along with raising slogans of Khalistan Zindabad, the Khalistanis also raised banners of Khalistan Referendum 2020. This was well known even before Kartarpur Corridor was opened, that Pakistan will try their very best to exploit the sentiments and emotions of the Sikh community. And these posters are clearly indicative of the Pakistani devious and evil designs to exploit the sentiments and emotions of the innocent Sikhs and try and radicalize them against the Punjab government and against the government of India. They have plans in terms of re referendum 2020 which is meant to encourage Punjabis to Punjab to secede from India. Their attempts are absolutely and totally not workable in today's environment. But that notwithstanding, Pakistan doesn't see that daylight and continues to use every possible mean to incite violence in India through these posters where they feel that they'll be able to radicalize certain amount of Sikh population. Various intelligence reports suggest that Kartarpur Corridor could be used to reignite secessionist movement in Punjab. Sikh for Justice, now a banned organization in India, is also planning to use the Kartarpur Corridor to push their secessionist agenda, the reports inform. The SFJ is backed by Pakistan-based handlers to provide money and logistical support to vulnerable youth in Punjab to carry out subversive activities. See, the government of Punjab and the central government are very, very strong governments. There is no way that they will allow a revival of this sort of a thing besides 
the government of India has very categorically indicated to Pakistan as well as to whoever wants to understand that there is absolute zero tolerance. Earlier, we did not exercise, exercise the right of self-defense. Now we are exercising the right of self-defense time and again. After URI, what happened is not, not unknown to Pakistan. After Pulwama, the Balakot strike is not unknown. Recently, we again carried out strikes against three terrorist training camps. Should Pakistan indulge in any of these activities or the Six for Justice indulge in any activity, the price that they will have to pay would be hideous. Pakistan is making desperate attempts to revive banned organizations like Khalistan Liberation Force, Babur Khalsa International, Khalistan Commander Force, Khalistan Zindabad, and International Sikh Youth Federation in India. India continues to raise objections with Pakistan over use of several Gurudwaras in the country for promoting pro-Khalistan messages. Academic scholars and diplomats from across the world have always condemned Pakistan for supporting terrorism. Recently, Christine Fair, a leading American expert, and Nikki Haley, a former U.S. envoy to U.N., slammed Pakistan's state machineries for supporting terrorist outfit in their terror plans in the subcontinent. UN-designated terrorist outfit Lashkar-e-Taiba and Pakistan's notorious spy agency ISI are an idle proxy of each other, said Christine Fair, a leading American expert on security issues. Speaking at an international event, Fair asserted Pakistan army trains terrorists in their territory and provides foreign funds and equipment to Afghan Taliban to carry out terror attacks in Afghanistan. And the organizations that I think we're mostly concerned about from an international security point of view are groups like the Afghan Taliban, Jaish al-Muhammad, Lashkar Taiba with its various name changes, Jamaat al-Dawa, Falah and Saniyat Foundation. These are state proxies. They operate with the, the state support. They do its, it, they basically act as extensions or tools of statecraft. Even the Pakistan Taliban are proxies gone wild. There would be no Pakistan Taliban if there were no Afghan Taliban, no Lashkar Jangvi, or Jaish al Muhammad. Slamming Pakistan for harboring dreaded terror outfits in the country, Christine confirms that such terror groups operating in Pakistan pose major threats to international security. They function under the Pakistan's state patronage as its proxy. In the last 13 years, when Pakistan's been the recipient of some $30 billion, and that, that, by the way, is overt money. We have no idea what monies they've received covertly for, you know, capturing various number threes of al-Qaeda uh, in various Pakistani cities. I'm sure that's also quite lucrative. But on our dime, they've been able to expand their nuclear program. You know, Neil is in a position to speak to that. And at the same time, um, they've continued their commitment to a whole fleet of terrorist organizations and insurgent organizations that very much threaten not only our national interests, but also the interests of our partners. And to not, you know, to put a very fine point on this, um, in exchange for that $30 billion that we collectively have given the Pakistanis, they have taken that money with one hand and they filtered it through a variety of mechanisms with the other hand to the Afghan Taliban, who are killing our troops. Along with academic scholars, diplomats from America also condemn Pakistan for harboring terror outfits in the subcontinent. Nikki Haley, former ambassador to the UN from America, had also lambasted Islamabad, alleging that the nation breeds terrorists who go out and try to kill American soldiers. Pakistan has played a double game for years. They work with us at times, and they also harbor the terrorists that attack our troops in Afghanistan. That game is not acceptable to this administration. We expect far more cooperation from Pakistan in the fight against terrorism. The president is willing to go to great lengths to stop all funding from Pakistan as they continue to harbor and support terrorism. The United States, which supported Pakistan for years, has long been frustrated by what it sees as Pakistan's reluctance to act against groups such as the Afghan Taliban, 
the Lashkar e Taiba, and the Haqqani network, who they believe exploit safe heaven on Pakistani soil to launch attacks in India and Afghanistan. Amid the growing international pressure, Pakistan proclaimed that it had launched a crackdown against all the terror outfits in Pakistan. However, soon it came out with its template excuse of deficit of funds. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.